This is one more question from College Board on um, review questions that you have in your quizzes. A pack of mass MP slides across a horizontal surface and collides with a stationary non-uniform rod that is pro, um, pivot, pivoted above its left and in three configurations as shown. In each case, the puck travels with the same initial velocity, VP, and collides with the rod at the time of TC. In case one, so we have case one, in case two, in case three. In case one, the puck rebounds away from the rod. In case two, the puck comes to rest after the collision with the rod. And in case three, the puck sticks to the rod. Frictionless effects between the rod, puck, and the floor, as well as frictional effect of the pivot are small enough to be considered negligible. On the graph below, or on the side, okay. so here is the graph that we're going to be using. So on the graph on the side, uh, sketch and label the two quantities as a function of time for case one. You do not need to calculate values for the y and x um, axis, but the same vertical scale should be used for both quantities. Angular momentum of the puck and angular momentum of the rod. Label the graphs puck and rod. So I have angular momentum and I have to place pot and I have to place rod on the same graph. And for case one, I have the puck rebounds away from the rod. So because the rod is not moving before the collision, um, at some TC, I think they labeled it here for you. So this time is TC. Until there's going to be collision, the rod is going to have um, no angular momentum. And after the collision, the rod's momentum is going to jump to some value. So this is going to be the rod. Also, when I look at my um, case one, I see that um, I see that when the object when the mass is moving toward the rod, when the mass is moving toward the rod, it has linear momentum. P is equal to mv. And when I say m, I mean this is the mass. And when I say v, that's this is the v of the puck. And so for the system, so if I look at the system uh, before and after, my linear momentum is conserved and my angular momentum is conserved. So linear momentum of the system before is equal to linear momentum of the system after and linear and angular momentum of the system before is equal to angular momentum of the system after. And even though we never looked at um, an object moving in a straight line have an angular momentum. There is an angular momentum for the object moving in a straight line uh, relative to a point. So your mass has angular momentum relative to the point. So your linear momentum is equal to mv. And to convert it to angular momentum, um, just as before, if you go back to your um, circular motion, uh, angular motion, you will, uh, if you remember that your um, distance around the circle, I'm going to call it S, distance around the circle. So if you have a circle, and what is this distance covered right here? There is a relationship between R 
and um, and the angular distance that it travels theta. So that is equal to r theta. And also your tangential velocity, the one that is perpendicular to the radius. Your tangential velocity has a relationship with angular uh, velocity. And your um, tangential acceleration is has a relationship with your angular acceleration. And therefore, your um, linear uh, angular velocity is has um, relationship with your linear velocity. So L is actually equal to R M V. And in this our case, it's the puck. So the puck does not have angular velocity moving in a straight line, but it doesn't make sense because it's always relative. And when it's relative, we say it's relative to the point that doesn't move um, in the rod. And so whenever it hits uh, the rod at um, some point, it will cause torque or rotation of the rod. And uh, so there is angular momentum. So what I can say here in this problem is that momentum before, linear momentum before, is equal to, or angular momentum before, is equal to angular momentum after, final. Your angular momentum before is R mass of the puck, velocity of the puck, and equals to uh, angular momentum after, it's the rod's inertia uh, times its angular velocity after. And then plus, we have um, in case one, the um, the puck rebounds. So you have still R mass of the puck. And this case is going to be now a negative velocity of the puck because puck is going to change the direction. So puck is changing the direction um, after it rebounds. So that would be the momentum before and the momentum after for the system. So now if we go look back at our graph, we have, so the rod had no angular momentum, it did not move at all. And afterwards, the rod does have angular momentum. So here is the rod's angular momentum. And uh, the puck's angular momentum is now negative. But the momentum before is equal to the momentum after. So that means um, if the puck, let me do it in a different color. So if the puck has this much momentum before, you have a total of this much momentum before collision. So afterwards, you still have to have this much momentum after the collision. So after the collision, the puck must have this much momentum afterwards to still have the same amount of angular momentum in the system because if i say this number whichever that number is plus this number whichever this number is still should give me what i used to have for the raw for the puck before so this would be your so the blue is the puck and the rod is the red. Elsa, I found a very good video explanation, detailed explanation for, uh, for this example. So I'm going to post or similar examples or one of the examples that is uh, given in this problem. I'm going to post it in the description and um, suggest that you follow um, that channel as well because it has a lot of uh, good explanations and video related to physics. Part B is very interesting. So rank the magnitude of the three angular displacements, theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3, through which the rod has rotated two seconds after the collision. Use 1 for the greatest. So we're going to use 1 for the greatest change of angle, and then 2 and 3 for smaller and smaller. If any two or all three angles are the same, use the same number for their ranking like maybe one 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 um, in a clear coherent paragraph length response 
responds um, that may also contain figures or equations to justify your ranking. So what they're asking you, so this is data one, this is data two, and this is data three. And um, the, the solutions are, um, or the, the thought process is going to be this way. I have to look at angular momentum before is equal to angular momentum after. And in each of these cases, uh, you will have different, um, different velocity, angular velocity. So you will have different angular velocity for every single case. So let's rewrite this formula one more time. So for case one, this is when it rebalances. I have angular momentum before, which is R, M, puck, and uh, V puck. That's momentum before because the, the rod is not moving. And then afterward, I have um, the inertia of the rod and angular velocity of the rod, and then plus, and I have again R, mass of the puck, and uh, velocity of the puck. But in this case, uh, this part is negative because puck is changing its direction of the motion. So that is negative velocity of the puck. So here I have, um, I can say it's mass, I, I'm gonna keep just R for now. So I have R, MP, VP is equal to I omega plus, and here R times VP, and I also can keep it negative because there's a negative sign, minus MP omega. So in this case, omega is equal to R MP, VP, that's the initial velocity before it hits the rod. And here I have I minus MP. So that's for case one. For case two, let's look, let's go back and look what happened in case two. In case two, they say, um, so here is the case two. The puck comes to rest after the collision with the rod. So if the puck comes to rest after the collision with the rod, so um, the second part of the equation is going to disappear. So I have R, MP, VP is equal to I, omega. But there is no more puck moving, so I don't have to write anything there. So this is our first case. This is the first case. And then here in this case, the next one, I have my omega is equal to, or angular velocity is equal to RMP VP is equal to I. So this is my second case. And for the third mm -hmm. case, they stick together. So I have um, case three. And I have R M P V P is equal to, and when they it sticks together, so this was inertia of the um, rod, and now inertia of the rod is going to increase because there's more mass farther away from the center. So um, this so this was one inertia. The rod was not changing its shape, so. Um, it's the same in both, but this inertia is different. So this is a different inertia. Maybe I should make a different color. So this inertia is different. And, um, and they stuck together, so that's going to be some angular velocity. So in this case, omega is equal to RMP VP divided by this 
inertia a different one the one that has mass or maybe i'm just going to write a little period here the inertia with the new mass on it so this is the third case and also inertia with the mass is greater than inertia of the rod alone so from all these cases i see that um, this omega in case one is going to be the largest omega in two is going to be a little bit smaller because i divide by um, i here it was i minus mp and here this i um, inertia in the bottom is larger than the previous one so this one is going to have um, smaller uh, angular velocity so for me to rank them i would say one two and three and that's it for this question and watch the link that i'm gonna add maybe i'll add two links one on um angular momentum that fits this kind of problem maybe another example where you can see so you understand it better and deeper and then um, a good explanation how uh, linear momentum turns into angular momentum